TLC family, welcome into Life in the Light. I'm Keandra and I am honored to greet you. We would love to hear from you. Please let us know who you are, where you're watching from. If you would, please subscribe, like, and share this. Come on, now it's time to worship. Let's go in. I want to clap a little louder than before. I want to sing louder than before. Chantel here. We hope you're being blessed by praise and worship. 
We're going right back in. But for now, here's some light news. If this is your first time experiencing the light, let's get you connected. Thelightchurch.us is where you can connect with us. We'd love for you to join our family, take the light way, and get involved in ministry. Yes, you heard it, and it's here. Every Wednesday in July, join us for a series of critical conversations. Please don't miss this series. As we continue to keep Matthew 25 alive in providing food, water, shelter, clothing, and visitation, we want to take this time to extend to you an opportunity to partner with us in giving. There are many ways you can give. You can mail your tithes in. The address is on the screen, P.O. Box 567, Youngstown, Ohio 44501. You can also text to give or visit thelightchurch.us and select giving. All right, everybody, welcome in to Life in the Light. I'm the lead pastor, Pastor Mark T. Jackson, and I'm just grateful to be here with some of my friends, some family. This is a Light Church family, and even some of my other family, members. you'll see just a minute. But we talked about in July, we wanted to start this thing called Critical Conversations. This is gonna be so fun. And it's just a time for us to get together and connect. And we gotta be different. We're still gonna be biblical, but it's critical conversation. And we're gonna talk about some things that, that are maybe on your heart, maybe on your mind. I want you guys to do this right now. Would you share this with somebody? Uh, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. And then hit the bell so that you can stay connected and we can send you uh, notifications about when we're doing things and when we put things out. We want to get you connected. If you don't have a church home, man, the lightchurch.us. Go there and connect with us. And we would love to. The lightchurch.us. Go there and you can connect with us. And we'll make sure uh, that you get all the information that you need. And we'll make sure that you get, a, you're, you get to be a part of our family. All right, everybody. I want to introduce you to uh, some of the crew that's going to be talking with us today. We're going to be in a powerful conversation. Today, we are talking about change, the necessity of change. With everything that's popping off in our country, in our world, in our church, in our business, in our schools, man, we got to talk through this thing on change. And so sit back, feel free to give us any type of comments. You can comment on this, share comments. I'm seeing them, we're watching them with those comments. So let those comments fly. And not only that, be sure to like this, love it, whatever you need to do, it helps our YouTube algorithm. And so let's just welcome Robinette Cotton. Hey Robinette, just say hi to the people. Hello everybody, I'm Robinette Cotton and I serve as the um, the chief the chief of the staff <laughs> for the she's Life Church. That. She ain't saying it, but she's that. She's the chief of that. She for the like, Light Church, the, for the Light Church, and um, this a, I'm just honored to be here and be on the call and to hopefully give a little insight into our topic tonight. That's great, great, great. We want to welcome Shawana. Welcome, Shawana. Shawana, where are you from now? I am from California, Long Beach, California. At that, I'm in Fresno, but I'm from Long Beach. Now, what church you go to? I go to the Light Church. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> We got members in Cali, what's up? That's right, that's right. I, I love it. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so like Pastor said, my name is Shawana Himes and I am a community mental health specialist for Fresno County. And I work with um, clients who are severely mentally ill. Um, so the work is quite arduous as you could imagine, but you know what, I love what I do and God has graced me to do it. So I'm also a mom of three, so look. They warm my heart, so I'm gonna say I'm I am blessed. I love it. I love it. We got Courtney Brown on here. Hello, Courtney. Hello. A friend to my mind, everybody. Y'all, t- just tell them a little bit about you. Yeah. So um, I currently serve as the operations manager and director of family partnership at Habitat for Humanity, East Central Ohio. So we work with families who are low to moderate uh, wage earners uh, to allow them to achieve home ownership. We're a Christian nonprofit housing ministry. So we get um, to show the love of Christ um, to people in a tangible way that is housing, uh, decent and affordable. And I love being a part of the Light Church family. 
uh, the it's it's an amazing place, and like Shawana said, I feel blessed to be here today. Now, what y'all might not know is she can preach the walls down too. Just in case you didn't know, that's somebody you want to invite to your church if you want everything just to be torn up. Get you Courtney Brown. She's amazing. I'm an amazing speaker, amazing person as well. Rico, what's up, my main man? Hey, bro. Oh, hey, Pastor, how you doing? I'm good. Tell the people a little bit about you. Uh, well, my name is Rico Spencer. The first, uh, I am the video director at the Light Church. What a coincidence that I'm also a quality assurance engineer in a lighting company uh, called Kitchener Lighting. Besides that, I'm a father of four. Wow, married to a beautiful wife. Man, and God is so faithful. That's good, 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 good. Angel, what's up? Hey, how are you guys doing? Um, my name is Angel Pixley. I am a co-owner of Thrive Counseling, which is a behavioral health agency. Um, it specializes in mental health and drug and alcohol, uh, substance use. Um, we're certified to work with ages four and up. Um, I am also a member of The Light Church and I'm definitely blessed and excited to be here. Wow. Oh, most importantly, I have two kids. Can't forget that part. I love it. I love it. And last but not least, I say the best for last, I guess I could say. Man, these two are so special to me. Pastor Tony and Lady Charlotte Lewis, welcome in tonight. Tell the people a little bit about you and who you are and where you are from and what you do. I, I, amen. Thank you for having me. I'm Pastor Tony Lewis, a.k.a. Black Vegan Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pastor, I'm the Senior Pastor of Light of Life Church. All right. And I'm sitting next to the most important thing in my life. <laughs> the one and only Amazon bestselling oh author. <laughs> Mother of four kids, all my babies by her. <laughs> Lady Charlotte Lewis. Oh my God. I can't wait till this is over. Oh Lord. Oh, Lord. Hey. Oh, Lord. Hey. Lord. Don't edit that out. Edit that out. I got it. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> We are we are excited. We're excited that uh, you had us come on, um, especially talking about change. So we're, we're ready. We're ready for you. Thank you. Right now, you literally, I was thinking about what we could encourage the people with, what we could talk about in this call, and it just hit me. Holy Spirit said, "You need to talk about change. Yeah, things are changing." And it just hit me. You wrote the book on it, literally. <laughs> Amen. It's shameless ah. plug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yes. Shameless plug. Everybody. Go. Listen, listen. Make sure you get it. We support the United Negro College Fund. We got three Negroes. We're trying to send to college. So please make sure you get one. I love get it. All, get all, there's a book you can get. <laughs> listen, we're going to get into this conversation. Before we get into this conversation, I'm just going to say a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for those who are tuned in all over the world. I pray, Lord God, that over this next month, they'll feel your presence, that they will be uh, just moved to serve you in another capacity, a deeper, stronger capacity, Lord God, that uh, whatever needs to change in their life, that you would uh, cause them to have enough strength to, to, to change, Lord God. Give them the motivation to change. And I pray, Lord God, that you would just bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, everybody. And so we're going to start with this conversation on, which is going to be a conversation. Yes, it's biblical, but at the same time, but I thought just for a month, let's just talk. Let's talk about things that are on people's mind. I believe in being relevant. Y'all know my pastor, y'all pastor, um, Pastor Tony and Lady Charlotte, our pastor is Dr. Ari Vernon. And one thing he pushes me to do is to be relevant, uh, speak to what's going on in the time. And I just thought it would be a great time for us to, to kind of talk through some things. And so we're going to talk about change tonight. I want you to tune in. Everybody, y'all, uh, just watch with us tonight. The, the first question I, I want to ask is, what is changing in the world as we speak? Let's just talk there. What have, what have you noticed already? What are some things that are that are changing as we speak? What's changed? 
Well, well again, uh, Pastor Mark, thank you for inviting us and having us on. Right now, in, in lieu of COVID-19 and racism in our country, a lot of things, as everyone can agree, has, has changed. Uh, church has changed because we can no longer do church the way we used to do church. Mm. See, all of us are mega church pastors now. <laughs> all yeah. of us are, are preaching up to a thousand or two thousand people, and and things have changed. Uh, our production had to change. Uh, uh, the way we did ministry or the way we do Bible study now with Zoom and and, and uh, Facebook Live, a lot of stuff has changed. It's been a challenge for me. I know for me, being a a young pastor just starting. Um, to immediately be shifted into this, this new paradigm, this new way of, of doing church uh, mm -hmm. took a lot of, of work. And I would say, I don't know how, how we're adjusting to it. I think we did, we're doing okay, but at the same time, I don't know, we're reaching everybody. Some of the older people, uh, maybe they don't know how to get on. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that just, I kind of want to go to everybody's house just to make sure they're okay. I, you know, it's just weird. Yeah. But we're doing our best to adjust to it. So how are you guys adjusting um, to that? Um, I, you know, the adjustment, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. At first, when we first heard, because we have church in a movie theater. So when we got the call that says, hey, we're shutting everything down, it, it was a little fear and trepidation. What happens now? Um, how do we maintain, uh, how do we touch our people when you can't touch anyone, mm. right? So it's, it's kind of that thought, what happens now? Is everybody just going to fall by the wayside? And we had to, as you just said, with our pastor, he's taught us, uh, don't make excuses, make adjustments, right. right? So how do we adjust? And immediately we went, okay, we got to go live. And one of the things that we started doing was we started doing prayer three times a day on Facebook Live. Wow. And we've every been doing day. it every day. We huh. do it every day. Uh, every day. Every day. We haven't missed a day. I we hope y'all say in my name. Uh, yes, yes, we, we do. do. And the Light Church. Yeah, Absolutely. And the Light Church. 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. Um, now this is going month three. We haven't missed a day. And what we have noticed, our people, because we can't get together physically, literally get on, and we have 70, 80 people on a prayer call at 7 in the morning, at noon, and at 6, people that don't even belong to us. And it's formed a sense of communities. Even though we can't be together, we see each other almost every day, three times a day. So, so you have literally turned those lemons into lemonade for us. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. And and we've had people who came on and said, every time I turn on Facebook, there they are praying. Yeah. <laughs> praying. I, I had a pastor one time tell me, he said, I, every time I go on Facebook, I see you pray. Wow. But it's it's worked out well. We've gotten members. Yes. New members. New members. Since, and people are getting saved. Lives are getting saved. People are, are coming to Jesus uh, because of those prayers and, and those Sunday services. So, that's, that's, so we thank God for that. Absolutely. That's beautiful. That's that's the main thing. Robinette, why don't you speak to that a little bit about, um, you know, your chief of staff here at the Light Church. Um, what have you had to do to adjust? What have you seen us do as a church to change um, and just, you know, connect with the time that we're living in? It's really the constant contact that is critical. It's constant contact, whether it's, um, in our case, whether it's a group me, whether it's a call, whether it's an email, whether it's consistency and having those Bible studies, consistency and having meetings, it's consistency from the leadership that is critical during this time to stay connected to the people. And that's where we're kind of pushing in that and pushing in that direction. Yeah, I love the uh, Bible studies, um, even like this online, those of you who are watching right now, I love the noonday prayers. Uh, on Wednesdays. I love the 8.30 a.m. prayer where people can come in, like you said, on Sundays, and then just connecting. Um, but it's church different. It's, it's changed now. And what I'm seeing is, and maybe uh, someone else can speak to this, but I'm, I, people are coming to me, and the main question they're asking is, when are we going back? You know, when are things going back to normal? When are we getting back into the facility? 
I haven't had many people say, what if this is it? Like, what if things don't get better? What if, like, nobody's saying it. Everybody's saying, when can we go back to everything being comfortable? Uh, Courtney, you want to speak to that maybe? Yeah, I think what we're seeing is that's changing is like a value system shifting. Um, you, you're intentional about things that were frivolous before this. Mm-hmm. And even if it's just something as small as going to the grocery store, now it's intentionality behind everything. And perhaps that is what God is trying to do with the church too, right? So if we can't gather, you know, the Bible says we're, you know, two or three are gathered in name, there I should also be. Well, he takes the gathering out of the natural here on earth. So how do we gather now? And what is it really that we're receiving in this gathering that we cannot receive when we're at home? Uh, what's the value? If the spirit is dwelling anyway, what is it that we so long for when we commune together? Um, and is the church really supposed to be mobilized? And maybe we have lost sight of that, you know, because we're so drawn to the gathering in the building. Um, so I do think that the value of church is changing. You know, what it is in our lives, it wasn't supposed to be uh, it was a lifestyle. It wasn't a day of the week. You right. know, the church is a lifestyle. And if we can take some of those things that we so value in that building and put it on our street, in our neighborhoods, mm. then maybe having to get back to that building isn't as huge. Because it is huge for me. I go, well, I want a corporate worship. I want to, you know, I, I love church. I love to feel that. But what happens when you can't go back? Right. Where do you corporate worship now? Yeah. That's something that sort of leads me into my second question. Um, because many people have been asking different, different things about when are we going back? When can we get back to normal? So I'm glad you brought that up. But the second thing I want to ask is, is change. It, has this been healthy for the church? And not just for the church, but just in general. It is change healthy uh is it necessary and why maybe angel or shawana maybe you want to guys you guys want to speak to that is change necessary is it healthy and and why i definitely believe that change is healthy and necessary um one of the things that i always try to tell myself is um that through change comes lessons and blessings so you can't get to those lessons and those blessings unless you go through a change um and so it may be uncomfortable um, and it may be an adjustment, but I feel like we're learning so much. Um, I feel like we're able to help so many more people too, you know, uh, and it's also challenging us. We got so comfortable um, uh, uh, just being together a certain type of way. We got so comfortable the way we worshiped in a way that we viewed church that I feel like once we got out of our comfort zone or once something happened, we did not know anymore. You know, like it was, how do I still get in contact with people or how do I still uh, fellowship? How do I still do the things that I'm supposed to be doing? Um, mm-hmm. Not in the physical building. So I know for me, it was definitely a challenge because I realized, you know, it's not, um, it's, it's very easy when you're seeing someone constantly. It's very easy when you're going to church or you're seeing them at Bible study or, you know, different events and stuff like that with church. But when you don't see them, um, how do you still maintain those relationships? How do you still encourage and and how do you still have that uh, fellowship? And most importantly, you know, how do we still connect and help those? Um, how do we uh, help those with a need if we're not necessarily seeing them or being around them to know what that need is? So, um, mm. but most importantly for me, just realizing that the change came with lessons and blessings. That's what I I, I love that because you're speaking to the church, but I also want you to speak to, because you're, you're a business owner. You have your own business, and it's doing well. It's doing well. Thank God it's doing well. Yeah, well even during this pandemic, uh, yeah. you some success. But can you speak to those who might be entrepreneurs and some people who might be a little bit deflated, a little defeated, because they feel like, man, I just started my business or I thought it was going to go like this and this kind of, it's not going the way I expected. Can you speak to how you have adjusted um, to change and actually had to change because of what's going on now? Well, um, most importantly, I think um, what I first did before I did anything else was pray. Uh, I definitely spent a lot of time in prayer 
um, because I was like, you know, I, I, uh, originally um, I had to calm myself down because I didn't know what was going to happen to my business. You know, would I go out of business? How would I, I have a staff, I have, you know, people whose livelihoods depend on, you know, this business and this income. So what would I, you know, what do I do? Um, mm -hmm. But most importantly, honestly, like I took advantage of a lot of the resources on um, pastor, you had a workshop that you offered. So having the opportunity to take advantage of different resources, an example is the financial workshop that you had with um, Larice Purnell, and it gave a lot of information and insight on, um, you know, different um, things that you could participate uh, in as a business owner to help sustain your business or to help you if there is, um, you know, like if you struggle with getting an income and things like that. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I'm calling our entrepreneurs together again. Those of you who are business owners, your entrepreneurs, your investors, let's connect again. Uh, let me also speak to this. Um, we got some exciting things going on, even in July the 19th. Uh, we have to change. Um, even men in our city, we're, we're calling the men together. We're getting ready to do this thing, 300 Men March. 300 black men coming together in the name of unity, and collaboration in Christ's name to, to unify and say, we are going to change for the better and we're going to impact our city. Speaking of quality men, strong men, I had to call this alpha male out, Rico Spencer. What's up, Rico? Talk to us a little bit about what's changed in your life with this pandemic and everything. What have you, how have you adjusted to it? A uh, few things actually have changed. Um, as I stated earlier, I am an engineer, so I travel a lot for work, uh, whether it's Dallas, China, India. So I'm, I'm away from home a lot. Um, and me being a father, that's difficult for me. To, I, I don't like to be away from my kids for more than 24 hours. Um, but now I'm forced to work from home. Uh, so my, my position has become, I permanently work from home. So it's, I don't leave home. I'm always around my kids. Now I wanted to get away for a day, if, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I didn't realize how much of a headache I can, I can get with them, with them around here. Uh, I'm also a, a, um, an entrepreneur as well. Me and my wife just celebrated our gym being open for a year uh, you, last week. You got to talk about this gym because your wife uh, is yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, when our gym... Our gym got shut down. It was difficult for her, but me and Pastor, we had an offline conversation randomly talking about how to make more money by doing virtual classes. So in the midst of me trying to implement virtual classes to our gym now, we get to shut down. So all I can do is tell her, might as well bring one of the bikes home, do a virtual class from home. And we have people all over actually the world. We have uh, two people from India, we have some people from London that actually do our cycle classes. Um, and now the gym has opened back up. So with the, the change with the gym opening back up, the only difference is I can't have too many people in at, the, at one time. Okay. Um, and that's just the health risk. I mean, I, I got my degree in medicine, so I, I prefer to do things the healthy way. So I clean the bikes uh, before people get on, and I clean them when they get off. So you guys have seen somewhat of a positive impact. You Yeah. Adjustment, it was probably hard at first, but now you got people from all over the country coming in. Yeah, and That's we actually still implement that virtual class in our, when we do physical classes. So we still get more people log on and ready to ride. So many people were saying, Pastor Mark, y'all need to go to a TV ministry, maybe start do some online ministry. And I was just like, not yet. I don't feel like we're ready yet. Let's just stay in the four walls. Let's just practice. And then when this happened, I had to change. <laughs> I, I literally had, I had to go online, else we wasn't gonna have nothing. You all know how I am. I could be a perfectionist about stuff being right, blah, blah, blah. and God was like, no, come on, let's go. And that said, had we not changed, man, we might not have Shawana on here as a member of our church. Shawana, come on, talk to us a little bit about change for you. Come on, talk, talk a little bit. Yes, yes. I must say change is very, very necessary. So I'm so glad, Pastor, you're having this conversation on tonight um, for everybody. I mean, because we need it. I think that change aspects allows us to see what's on the inside of us. 
so we can really know what's in us. And sometimes if we didn't have that change or a circumstance occur, we would stay stagnant sure. in certain areas. So when I tell you that change is necessary to pull greatness out of us, um, to be able to see that. So I'm just glad that even in this pandemic, and it's kind of weird that I say this, Pastor, because you know with, with the number of people, with the number of deaths and everything that's been occurring with the COVID-19, it's like we have that aspect of it. Then we have the other side to where we're getting blessed. Some people, that's my testimony. So I'm getting blessed even during this pandemic. Um, but it has changed me in the area to allow me to slow down. So I was just so busy. And so this allowed me to change and say, look at what all you're doing. Evaluate some things. Slow it down a little bit. Change some, you know, get your priorities together. Change some things. And so that's why I'm glad, actually, not to say I'm glad that it happened the way that it did, because, you know, with the deaths part of it, you know, when people dying, that's the hard part for me. But the fact that it occurred to allow me to see things in my life to take me to the next level. That's really good because I'm one of those persons, I'm nearing 40 years old and I know what it means to go to church every week, <laughs> three times a week. I couldn't remember, I could count on my one, maybe, maybe two, maybe one hand, how many times on a Sunday that I miss church in my life, yes. 40 wow. years. Yes. So this is crazy for me. Like this is like what? No church. <laughs> I, I'm a church boy. I'm an apologist for church. I love church, right? And no church. But then God was just pushing me. Like maybe you needed to rest from this. You've been doing this for like this. All you do. That's all you do is church. I said I need to kind of pull back just a minute. And this has given me so much time to rest to get things in order, to, to work through things. So I'm glad you brought that up. Speaking of which, in August, y'all, I'm, I'm considering us taking the month of August uh, just for Bible studies and just resting, literally, mm -hmm. uh, as a church before we start going back in September. We're planning to actually go back in September, Lord willing. But even then, on Sundays, we want to keep our norm but I'm going to start really preaching about how imperative it is to rest and really have a Sabbath. So I'm glad you brought that up, Shawana. Thank you for sharing that with us. All right, before we go deeper, I want to, I want to talk to this question. And let's go ahead and be transparent. Somebody's watching tonight. Thank you, those of you who are watching. Feel free. I, I see your comments. Comment. Talk to us. I, I want to know from you guys, was there ever an instance in your life and let's be transparent where you had to change. Was there ever an instance in your life where you had to change? And, I, and I'm going to pull in um, Pastor Tony and um, Lady Charlotte in just a minute because I really want you to speak to your book. And I'm going to talk to that in just a minute. But you guys, has there ever been a time in your life where you had to change? And how did you facilitate that? I'll answer that one. Um... Let's start off by saying I've only been a Christian for, what, eight years? Uh, I grew up Muslim all my life. Uh, and the major change uh, started, I mean, I was gang-affiliated, um, suicidal uh, after losing a son. So I kind of went through a lot of different changes at one time. Uh, losing a son was the major change that I had to go through. Uh, and in that change, um, my closest friend who was my son's godfather, uh, Elder Deontay Lavender, uh, once told me, change is going to be uncomfortable. Once it becomes comfortable, you have reached a new plateau. Mm. Uh, and right then, he had said that right after, he probably didn't know it, right after uh, an attempt to end my life. Wow. I lost my son a month before. Uh, my best friend had died the day before, and I was going through a lot. Um, I tried to run my car off the cliff into, the, into Lake Erie, didn't go anywhere. And at that moment, I knew it was time for a change. And I figured since I talked to uh, Deontay, who was heavy in church, 
and I've known him before church, so I knew, I knew the change. I saw the change. I knew it can happen to me. So I told, I told God that day, if I can leave this parking lot healthy, I'm giving the rest of my life to him. Uh, and yes, I had some bumps and bruises. I had met my wife <laughs> a year, what, four or five years prior to that in a whole different light. Um, we both were going through some issues. Uh, we never dated. I never exchanged numbers with her. I just saw her in passing. I knew of her. Um, so in the midst of me changing, uh, she reached out to me. She was interested in me. I turned her down. Uh, <laughs> I turned her down only because I felt I wasn't ready to not only date, but I wasn't ready to actually give myself to anybody. And so I knew I had gave, given myself fully to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it was the third time that she had asked me in passing, hey, let's go out for a burger or two. And that's when I knew God was sending her at a time that I needed her the most. Um, and hard that was a new change. That was. You was I, was, <laughs> I wasn't playing hard to get. I just was I don't I didn't think I was ready. I I was I came from the Playboy per, persona, so I feel that I can get any girl I wanted and settling down was I wanted that as a dream because my father was a womanizer. I grew up to be a womanizer. I wanted to be married, but I didn't want to bring a daughter into the world knowing that I wasn't a man that I want her to marry. Good. That's so until I got to that point, when I changed to become that person, I, I saw life in a different, from different glasses um, and everything has fell into place. Even from the day that I walked into the word church and told you I was called to you. Yeah. From that day I told you I was called to you, I followed you, where you wherever you went, served in every ministry you served in, uh, even so when you found out we were opening a church in Youngstown, I packed up from Cleveland, Ohio to mm. move closer to the light church. Wow. Uh, and at the same time of me packing, my wife get a promotion in the same area. Wow. Uh, so it was, it was purpose for me to move. So that change, it was the fact that I needed to be obedient in my change. Now change is going to happen, but it, are you going to be obedient in the change to actually accept it? And that's what I need to do. You sound like you preaching now. You, look, you got <laughs> nah. I love it. Um, Courtney, you want to speak to it a little bit? An area where you had to change? I could tell y'all one of mine real quick. Um, just being transparent, uh, I'll take my clothes off so y'all can get naked too. It is what it is. But one of the things that really impacted me was when I first lost my hair, I had to change. <laughs> <laughs> My hair fell out. <laughs> it went on strike, you know. And ever since then, it's just been, it's been, I'm just playing with y'all. I, I'm, 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 that was rough for real. A I, good one, good one. <laughs> All right, Courtney, come on in. Talk to us a little bit about a time where you had to check. Sure. Um, I grew up going to church. So I've known the Lord long, t- a long time. But God, at one point in my life, it's like, you can't ride the coattail of being raised in church. You either have to come for yourself, stop playing with me. Because I could do church. I mean, it was very, we grew up with that. So it wasn't, it wasn't new. But God hit me in a time in my life where he said, you are trying to ride the coattail of your parents' faith and it's in their prayers. You're just riding on their prayers. You're not praying for yourself. And you have to change because I'm changing things basically. And I, it was very clear to me. God said, you will come back to me. You can walk back, you can crawl back, or you can be on your back. Wow. But people will come to me because of you. You can choose how that happens. And I remember that saying, you know, people get saved at funerals, (laughs) you know, like you could still draw people to the Lord on your back, but I had decided that I wanted to walk to him. And because that was my ultimatum he put in front of me at that time. And um, that change was very necessary. And it was very hard because I didn't want to give up my life. Wow. That's just the reality. And I told him, I said, Lord, I don't want to give it all to you. What would you say to that person that's watching tonight who is sort of hanging on, cl- clinging on 
to the old them. Really, it's the, it's the present them, but it's the old nature. Uh, what would you tell them? At what expense do they have to change? Like, what are they missing? The real you. You know, if you really want to ask somebody why they're holding on to the, the them that God is asking them to come out of, you would say, are you really full? Are you really satisfied? If you're comfortable, that's fair, because I was comfortable. And I would probably even say I was content, but I wasn't satisfied. I would charge them with to really get deep into whether their lives are filled and satisfied with where they are, or if they're scared, because I was very scared to give up my life. And mm-hmm. still can be, that just honestly, you know, that takes faith. I still get fearful, um, but um, it's just call it what it is. If you're afraid, that's fair. God can work with that. Yeah, that's so good. That's good. I got to go to, real quick, let's go to the author, okay? Let me, let me talk to the author. She wrote the book on this. Okay. <laughs> Lady Charlotte, please tell us, first of all, what was your inspiration behind writing the book, I Had to Change? And just speak a little bit to the book, to those who don't know it. They, they haven't read it. Maybe they're considering a good read. Why should they choose this book? Well, you know, I had to change. The, the, the subtitle is Conquering My Past uh, to Embrace My Future. Mm. Um, and what brought me to change was uh, realizing that uh, I, was, I was living in dysfunction. And it's interesting, the young lady that I was just talking about, uh, knowing how to do church (laughs) and uh i had been in church been in leadership this is all before uh, we started the church and became pastors and i got to a point where um i was a deacon i was going to church every sunday wouldn't miss it was in so many ministries went to church hallelujah praise the lord how you doing i'm blessed and highly favored there were so many issues in my in my upbringing um, in my past, there was still shame. Uh, so I played, I, I wore the mask right now. Everybody's wearing a mask. <laughs> okay. So I had to change. Uh, the subtitle uh, is Conquering My uh, Past to Embrace My Future. Mm. And uh, what happened uh, before I wrote the book, I was, going, I was going really through a period where I was going to church. I was checking off the box. I was in ministry. I was helping. I did everything that I thought that I was supposed to do as a good Christian. I was just going through the motion, not realizing that I was in so much pain. And I would go to church. Hey, how are you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Everything was great. But I would come home feeling depressed. There was something missing. Um, And what was really missing was the relationship. And what was missing was the not dealing with the dysfunction of my upbringing. And what God showed me was I had to go back. I had to go back in my past and deal with that in order to change. Um, I know you said we wanted to have a conversation, but I got to bring up Romans uh, 12 and 2. No, uh, you know, that's what I want. Come on, as much Bible as possible. Yes. Um, and in the, in the message Bible, you know, it says... Now, wait a minute. Before you start this, do I need to go get my organ or a piano or something? No, 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 no. Please don't. <laughs> Wait, I will now. Yeah, hey, that, I'm something. ready. Um, you know, to renew our minds. And in the message version, it says that God will change us from the inside out. Mm-hmm. And that's where he got me to a point where I was so broken. And he literally said to me, you have to change. And not only did he tell me I had to change, you need to write it down. Um, I've journaled my whole life. I always want, you know, I was always a writer. And he said, I need you to write your story and be transparent. And that's really what the book is about, is about all of the changes that I had to make. Number one, the first change is realizing that I am the problem. Mm. The reason I wasn't changing or the reason I was afraid of change was because I was comfortable in my dysfunction. You know, sometimes we, we are so stuck in a dysfunction that it becomes functional. And it works for us because it comforts us. Like, even though I know this isn't right, 
it's okay because it makes me feel comfortable. And he literally had to take me out of my comfort zone. So right after my mom passed away, I realized I had to do something because I was grieving so bad. And uh, so he took me through a journey um, where I, I started going to therapy. Uh, hashtag Jesus plus therapy. <laughs> well, therapy is healthy. Therapy is very healthy. I started reading different books. Uh, Peter Cicero's book, Emotional Healthy Spirituality, which completely changed my life. Um, you know, it's impossible. Here's my favorite quote is what he says. It's impossible uh, to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. Mm. And I realized I was emotionally immature. I could quote scriptures. I could, you know, do church. But emotionally, I was still dealing with my past. And I realized I had to change. So he took me through like 10 things going back into my past, being able to forgive people, um, you know, changing my heart, changing my mind, uh, recognizing I'm the problem. All of that I had to go through in order uh, to change. Wow. Wow. I want to speak to Shawana for a second because I know you deal with mental illness, right? Is that correct? That is correct. So um, from that perspective, a person, let's talk about change from that perspective. How does a person change? Uh, how does that link to mental health? How, how do you tell this person is mentally ill? Is that a problem? Is mental illness a problem in the church? Let's talk through that a little bit. So mental illness is so real, <laughs> and it is also in the church. Um, a lot of people, um, and a lot of people don't know that they actually do have a mental illness. Some people are diagnosed with it. Um, some people don't have a diagnosis, um, but it is very, very real um, in a sense that the individuals who deal with these issues, whatever they're faced with, um, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, stress, these are real issues. And the thing is, a lot of people don't address them. And the thing is, we want people to get the help that they need so that way they're able to live somewhat successful, successful independent lives. Because if not, it can definitely affect your everyday living. So in that point, there has to be some change. Um, that change may be more so for that person to be able to manage it. They may not be ne necessarily able to get rid of it, depending on the severity, but they'll be able to manage it in the meantime, at least. So that goes with the whole process of being able to recognize certain things, um, different triggers, um, and being able to change from one level to the other. Um, so there's a whole little, it's a whole process there. Um, the clients we deal with, oh, my heart goes out, but I love what I do because you need someone with that to be graced by God to deal with it. But when I tell you, Pastor Mark, these individuals, sometimes it's almost to the point there where they can't help it but they want to, but it's really that heavy. That spirit is that heavy on them. Um, but what we through that, like you got somebody who's struggling. Maybe it's, maybe it's a, a drug addiction. Is it, is that the same? Is that in the same lines or in a lot of them maybe speak to that? Right. Because I think you handle that a little bit too. Right. So we'll get, I, but we'll, we'll get to you. Cause I need you to talk through that a little bit, but back to the mental illness, but, Let's just say somebody is depressed all the time, just depressed, depressed, depressed. How do they break out of that? I know we can, I'm not saying spir spiritually, yes, we can pray for them, cast it out, all that. But from a clinical perspective. But that one, it, it's, it, that's a process in and of itself too, Pastor. Um, and the severity makes a difference as well. The thing is the person, they will have good days and bad days. Um, there are things that they can use some practical tools. A lot of time we suggest, you know, some coping skills, um, that they can use to kind of help in those moments. Um, so they will do things essentially that will help them feel better. So when they're faced with those depressive moments, so we think of different things that help them. Some people, they need to go take a walk and that helps them. They need to listen to music. Music helps them feel better to not feel as depressed. And that may keep them okay for quite some time. Other times there are other triggers that will bring them back. So we just try to encourage them when those moments come and you feel them, you feel depressed, so let's go ahead and use those coping skills that you, you know, been practicing to help you in that area. Um, sometimes it lasts, they'll go weeks and months without any episodes, but then sometimes you'll notice that they will fall back and they'll have those, depending on those triggers, 
of course, so that's another area that, you know, you want to target and talk to a little bit as well is triggers, what those triggers are and ways to deal with those. Pastor, can I ask a question um, to Shawana and to the people who lead ministries? So, you know, Lady Charlotte, you were saying like you had you have been in the middle of your servitude. And I think a lot of people feel like they can't come and serve the Lord unless they're completely healthy. But <laughs> most of us get healthy in the middle of our leadership. Right. So as pastors, how do you do that? Because a lot of people leave the church because they were hurt by somebody in the church. But you're pastoring the leader and the and the person. How do you do that if someone has mental illness and they need to feel like they're contributing in the church, but you're afraid that if put in a position, they could hurt other people? How do you guys deal with that? Mm. So for for us, you know, I have mental illness in my family. Um, by way of depression, my mother was depressed. And so that's how I grew up seeing that my sister uh, was diagnosed with depression, I was diagnosed with uh, de depression and anxiety. Um, and so it's always kind of been part of my life. And I always believed it had to be part of my life. Um, I didn't realize I could do anything about it. So yes, I started going to therapy while I was in church. And I believed, and I kind of went against the grain because I was told in the church, all we had to do was pray mm -hmm. and, you know, and it could be cast out. Uh, no one ever told me, go see a, uh, a specialist or go in medicine. They told, you know, I heard things like, well, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't even take medicine. You don't have enough faith. Well, I finally went against all of that and decided that I needed to be healthy. Um, so even in the midst of, I believe that God graces us, that I, our anointing doesn't go away just because we have an issue. God picked me long time ago, yeah. <laughs> even yeah. before, yeah. you know, where I ended up. Um, so he gave me the grace still to be able to lead. Um, I was very careful when I did have certain episodes. My husband and I, we were very open about what I was going through. So when I did feel those times when I'm not really doing well right now, I don't know if I can speak into anybody's life. He would take the lead and I would just focus on getting healthier. So now that I'm in a place where I know my triggers, I know when things come around, but we decided that knowing what we went through now, when the people come to us and they have issues, I can let them know it's okay to go to therapy and, and to lead. It is okay to be on medication as long as you take your medication. Um, but don't be that person that says, well, I have to be on it forever. Maybe you will. I, I don't know. Um, but, uh, for us, and I don't know if you want to uh, speak to that a little bit as well, because we lived it and we know that you can still function and still serve the Lord with all your heart. Um, we don't turn people away. Now, if it's a, a serious mental uh, health crisis, then obviously we have to go do something else. But if you, well, well, uh, Pastor Mark, as you know, most pastors are leading and bleeding. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know, getting healthy again, my wife talked about Peter Cesaro's book, uh, Emotional Healthy Spirituality, Emotional Healthy Church, Emotionally Healthy Leader. Uh, bef before you can be elevated in our church and ministry, you have to go through those classes. You have to go. That started with us. So we had to make sure in order for us to lead God's people that, that we had to get healthy ourselves. Now, everybody, you know, we all still dealing with something. But it's always a, a very good thing for us to try to make sure that we get as healthy as, as possible so we don't bleed on the people that God has sent us. Because, you know, we, we serve the least, the lost, and the left out. Yeah. That's right. So, so, so we don't, we, you know, we, we have to be ready. We, we never uh, look at a member, no matter how bad the situation is, and say, man, they just crazy or they just, they just whatever. No, that's what God sent us. So we have to make sure that we get healthy so we can identify what that member vis-a-vis -vis people in our lives are going through so we can make sure that we're healthy ourselves so we can serve them. I know I, I'm still getting healthier and healthier. I've got areas in my life that I'm asking God, I got to get better in this. I got to do this better. You know, um, I'm not where I want to be. Y'all. I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to get better. Well, one of the other things that you talked about, you mentioned a few minutes ago, is the Sabbath. 
you know, if this would have been an hour earlier, I wouldn't have been able to get on because my sat Right. So 24 hours, I don't touch phones. I don't answer texts unless yeah. it's somebody I, I really, you know, want to speak with. Sure. But as far as the Sabbath is so important to us. Yeah. I mean, I, I tell my, I, I had a, I was on a prayer call, uh, doing a prayer call the other morning. I said, listen, if you text me or call me today, I promise you I won't call you back. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you I won't because I my our members know the people that are close to me, the people around me, they know that we need to rest. We yeah. need to have that rest. Um, and my wife will tell you, my wife will tell you, I'm doing it. Light church real quick. Just speak to the light church members about <laughs> the importance of the pastor resting. Just talk he, about it. He, hey, important? listen, a, a a dull saw cannot cut anything. Right. Uh. Absolutely. You have to sharpen the salt. And that, that from, for me, from Sunday night from 6 to Monday 6, that's what I'm doing. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying my wife. I'm enjoying my children. I'm in my garden. You guys know. Well, you know I'm a, I'm a farmer. I got tomato plants out. I got to get, get right. I got collard greens I got to grow. You know, I, 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 that's what I do. I enjoy, I enjoy that Sabbath. And plus, I'm, I'm, I'm fellowshipping with God. I'm gonna make a commitment to do that, to to rest. Yeah. Continue to rest on one day. Saturday is my Sabbath. That's yeah, the abs absolutely. And if you don't mind me saying real quick, you know, one of the things about about the Sabbath, um, I always tell people when they tell me, Well, I don't I'm too busy, I don't have time, I don't know when to do it. If if God rested, you know, he is our first example. So we can't say, well, I, I got to do this for this person. And because we get caught up in what we do for other people all the time. And we, we think we're these great Christians because we're so busy doing stuff for others. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it, we say it all the time. You can't pour from an empty cup, especially a pastor. So we always tell our people, if you want us to really be there for you, if you want us to be able to pour fresh things into you and to give you wisdom, you have to let us rest sometimes because if we don't, you're going to get leftovers. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to leave because you're going, well, you're not really paying attention to me. In order for us to pay attention to you, we need 24 hours just to be with God. This is good because I love the Light Church. I love the Light Church. I love it. I love the Light Church family. And um, I'm really admonishing those of you who are watching right now and you're not as involved. Well, Pastor, it's downtime. We're not at the church. Yes, you can still get involved. You can get involved. Yes. You can be active. We're doing things now. And we have this thing called the light way where everybody goes online and they take the light way on demand and they can actually get involved in what we're doing. But this grants me an opportunity to kind of take a say lot. I want to bring Robinette in on this conversation because she's been pushing me uh, to rest. And if you know anything, y'all might not know Robinette like this, but Robinette will up and go to another state on you. She will up and be fishing or, or just on, on a boat by herself. She, will, she gets her rest in. So I'm going to bring her into the conversation. How important is it to rest, Robinette, and, and rejuvenate yourself? It's critical. It's critical for your physical health, your mental health. It's critical for your entire life. We talked about change and I had to change the way I viewed my time. You know, you give time to so many things and I'll be there, I'll be around there. And what I was losing was rest. So pastor knows if this is a certain time, y'all can stay up all night. I have to go home. I have to be in the bed by a certain time because it throws you off. If you don't get your proper rest from myself, if I don't get rest at night, it throws me off mentally the next day. So that what I could give, I can't give. So mm. it's important and you have to, you have to make time for it. It's, it's not optional. It's not optional. We, you, we make time for what we want to make time for. You have to make that time for rest. And even if it doesn't, mean that you I do love to travel but especially now it's like no more traveling for this year but I can get my car and I can drive to the lake I can get on a boat I even in my home just put on some soft music read a book just give that time for rest turning off the tech turning off the news turning off the media I work in the world of IT turn off the computer yeah. and just take that time to rest it's not it's it's not a choice you have to make it a necessity for your life and you'll and it'll just be a blessing to you
That's so good. For now, guys, listen, we're going to continue this conversation, but we're going to stop here today. I want to thank those of you who tuned in to Life in the Light. Here's what I want you to do. If you love what we're doing, uh, if you want to help us to continue to do what we're doing, I'm going to ask everybody right now, those of you who will, come on, let's appreciate those who came on. Thank you so much. Um, they're going to join us even on next week. we got to continue this conversation. But what I want to ask you to do, if you would give something tonight, whatever you God puts on your heart to give, it's right there. You can text to give. Uh, you can even send it in the mail, P.O. Box 567 Youngstown, Ohio, 44501. You can even send it in the mail. There it is, 567 Youngstown, Ohio, P.O. Box 567 Youngstown, Ohio, 44501. Text to give. Whatever you want to do, go to the lightchurch.us and give. Help us to continue to bless people. Those of you who are tithing, thank you so much. If you've never given to the Light Church, if you've never tithed before, start today. Start today. Let's go, everybody. I want to challenge you to honor God with the tithe. It's the tenth of whatever he's allowed you to receive. That helps the kingdom agenda to be funded. And I want to appreciate you. We had a record-breaking offering on this past weekend, everybody. So kudos to all of you who are trusting God with tithing and giving. Thank you so much. It affords us the opportunity uh, to do what we're doing. And I love you so much. We're going to see you guys next week. On Max, matter of fact, we'll see you on this Sunday for another edition of Life in the Light. God bless you guys.